Ladies and gentlemen, you're listening to the Mac and T Show Podcast. Here are your hosts, Ryan McKay and T. David. This is the Mac and T Show. This is the Mac and T Show. We talk movies and TV shows. Sports and world news. Coasting like on a world cruise. Hosted by Brian McKay and T. Davis. Yeah. You can't tame us. We're going to the top. We're becoming famous. What time is it? It's time for the Mac and T Show. What time is it? I said it's time for the Mac and T Show. Welcome back to the Mac and T Show podcast. Women's okay. basketball. Oh. <laughs> um, this is something that T wanted to bring up last week, and we both were sitting there looking at each other, forgot all about it. Uh, didn't bring it up, so we're gonna bring we're gonna visit it this week. Candace Parker, um, WNBA superstar Candace Parker for the LA Sparks was left off. 2016 U.S. Olympic basketball team. Uh, a lot of different people out there, you know, giving their two cents on why this was, why this could happen. I, not knowing anything about the situation, um, just a uh, just a pure guess on my part. I'm going to guess she was probably difficult to deal with, probably had some demands. Um, Gino, not really having that, Coach Gino or Emma, the U.S. team, probably wasn't really having it. Uh, what do you What do you think, suggest? What do you well, think? I don't think that because she don't play it on two other ones that he has coached. So Correct. I don't think she would just lose her mind on like this year and say, oh, I want this, oh, I want that. Um. I just don't see how I saw in the past um, that they've all, it seemed like the number one pick has always somehow wound up on the Olympic team. Right. I don't think that should necessarily be the case just because you was the number one pick. So these women have been grinding for women's basketball for years and years and years. And so, like, the kid that they got from UConn, like, did she get the nod because she's one of his? And Candace happens not to play for UConn because Candace got to be better than her. Candace can play as many positions. So you can't say, like, Candace don't want gold. She don't want rookie to get in the WNBA. So what are you saying? Candace has had won national championships in women's college basketball. So I don't know how you can just. I don't know what measuring stick that gave her the nod over Candace if they were coming down to the last two picks. Like, yeah, uh, and one of the reasons that was given for her to be left off the team was, you know, just a numbers game with with that position. But like you just said, Candace Parker can play multiple positions. So, so start with the fools. She can play three, four, and five. So no. Don't even give me that. You tell some basketball don't know, but I know enough about basketball, and I don't think Candace Parker play enough to know that she can play and she can defend, defend all three of those positions. Right. So that's just a foolishness. Now, how many UConn uh, kids on this uh, Olympic team? Let's see, there's Brianna Stewart, um, Maya Moore, Tina Charles, uh, I want to say there's a couple more. It's Tarazi. Tarazi, yes. Sue Bird, I believe. And um, I want to say Stephanie Dawson. I don't. Okay. Maybe, I, I may be wrong on that. But I know there's at least five. Okay, so how is that? How, it, and I ain't even saying for Candace. He, it, it's just for all you come players just better than the rest of these kids that's out here. And I thought shouldn't say kids. These young women. Right. No. Taraji, yes. Easy. She bad. Um, uh, Maya. Did, did you say Maya? Maya Martin. Mm-hmm. Good. I'm good with 
again, Breonna Stewart, she was good in, 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 in college, but she shouldn't be on here if she's taking away a spot from somebody like Candace or whoever else that tried out that's older than her and that put in more work. Uh, matter of fact, she, she the only youngin' on here. The rest of them, Maya 26, that's 25, Brittany Grinder. They were done. Lord. Right. I don't see how this kid got this spot. Yeah, it, it, I don't. I, I don't think it'll cost them. I think they're still gonna win the gold medal. Oh, they gonna win. That yeah. ain't the issue. But I, I just feel like that she should be on this team, and she deserves it. Uh, she was, you know, she come out and said said that she was blindsided by it. So it'll be interesting. I, I, you know, the story is gonna come out eventually. Everything always makes its way to the surface. And the only thing in history that never made its way to the sur the surface is what happened to Jimmy Hoffa. Um, <laughs> So and why did what's his name punch that guy at the uh, uh Blake Griffin punch? It ain't came out yet. That'll come, don't worry, that that's still fresh. That'll come out. Still fresh, okay. Yeah, gotcha. that, that'll come out. Don't worry about it. Uh, moving on, still in women's basketball. That's the issue that we've talked about in the past. Uh, University of Kentucky head coach Matthew Mitchell has had a little string of rough times since the 2000 and I mean and they continue to win let me not say they're not winning they continue to win can continue to be successful but since the end of 2014-15 season uh Mitchell has lost I believe the last count was six players to transfer um one coach quit mid-season two other ones have left um uh, on their own I uh, know two other ones have been fired excuse me um he stated publicly that he takes full responsibility and has to do a better job. They've had some commitments decommit. Uh, recently, some coaching staff changes or some additions. He's added Tyra Elsey, who was on his staff before, who came back from Tennessee and where she's been the last couple of years as an assistant. And uh, that's where she played basketball, obviously. And then Nia Butts rejoins the Kentucky coaching staff after she's been almost a decade of at the, as the head coach in uh, Arizona. So hopefully they can come in and kind of help him, you know, get this thing back on the right track. I don't know what's going on. Don't That's have what any, I'm about to say. What's the deal? Why? why? Right. Don't have any inside information. I personally love Matthew Mitchell. Every time I've interacted with him, we've been, you know, he's been great. Yeah, you know, he's been cool, like a cool cat. Now, that's knowing him from just being a, Player and he was like, you know, coaching at Florida and everything when I was coming to basketball camps. But other than that, I don't really know him. Right. So I hope that he can get things, you know, go and get things on the right track again. He only has six scholarship players right now. Um, so it'll be interesting to see how he feels the rest of those spots so late in the recruiting game. Um, I don't know. I don't know what's going well, on. Well, Kyra Elsey seems um, been named associate head coach. Mm -hmm. so, did, she, did she play for him? She was on the team when he was a GA at Tennessee. Okay, because I knew I'd seen her somewhere before. Okay. Yeah, he was the Pats GA at Tennessee at the time when she was playing. Uh, who did he? He don't been there well. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I got <laughs> uh, but let's see. Moving on to the NBA, and before I bring anything else up, I just got a breaking news bulletin that oh, no. Stephen Curry is going to be named the MVP for the second straight okay. season. First of all, that ain't no breaking news. Next, go ahead. Yeah, uh, breaking, we didn't know breaking that. News. We didn't know that. Listen. If you had told us somebody else, <laughs> we'd have been like, "Oh, that is breaking news." Okay, go ahead. So, uh, so getting into our NBA topics, I want to get your thoughts on a rumor I heard circulating the newswire of a possibility of the Los Angeles Lakers trading whatever pick they get, you know, within the top two or three to the Indiana Pacers for the rights to Paul George. Oh, go sit down. Do what everybody else had to do and rebuild. I like Paul George, but Paul George is not going to get much better than he is now. I mean, he's 26, 27, and he's not going to get much better. I mean, that's just what it is. Now, you can't 
you don't know what you're going to get in these rookies, but you still got these high ceilings for both of them. They big bodies. Both of them look like they got good potential. I, I just go ahead and, and build. I know he's trying to, uh, he as in Jim Buss is trying to hurry up. And, and, and because he got one more year <laughs> before his sister's supposed to fire him or he going to quit, whichever happened first. Right. But the only reason he that's probably came up is because he know maybe somebody want to come and be a free agent and come now with Paul George there instead of having a bunch of young folks. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see. Because I'm sure Jim, like you say, he's trying to make that big splash so he don't get... <laughs> Get ousted by his family and and public pressure. <laughs> That's all that is. And yeah. according to Mitch Kupchak, he is just uh, he is acting as if they're gonna lose the, the pick. That's what he said. Oh no! And so he is making plans as what they're gonna do if they don't get the top one of the top three picks. I would so, say that the NBA wouldn't let that happen, but they the NBA did stop Chris Paul hey, from being traded there. And look, they owe us. Look, I'm bringing up old movies. Yeah, <laughs> they owe us. I'm still not happy. They almost ruined uh, Lamar Odom's life. <laughs> now you putting it all, all on the me. NBA fault. <laughs> yeah, because that boy got mad about being traded. Yeah. And then just went on a downward spiral. And everything went downhill after that. Yeah, after so. he put trade. Uh, yeah. Moving on to the playoffs. Uh, this past weekend, the Cleveland Cavaliers finished up their se- their series with the Atlanta Hawks and they moved on to the Eastern Conference Finals. Um, except for Game 4, the first three games, they I mean, hit an ungodly amount of three-pointers and, and tying the record at one point. Or breaking the record, I believe, for most three pointers in the game. Um, they've been on a roll this entire playoffs. Do you see them losing the game before the finals? They probably lose one. The other two people that they could potentially play are going to be better than uh, the Atlanta or yeah. the. Who, who they played in the first round? No, I can't even remember at this point. Who was it? Okay, so either way, they're going to be better than him. See, that's how bad it was. Yeah. Uh, this oh, point Detroit. Is it? it was Detroit. Detroit, thank so, you. Yes. Either one of them are going to be better than Detroit. So they probably lose one, maybe two. Uh, but they better stop thinking they, they, they are Golden State 2.0. Because you fall in love with them threes. That's what Golden State been doing all year. Y'all haven't been doing that. Right. Y'all follow that trap if you want to. I just, I think they'll have a harder time if they face Miami in the next round, even without Chris Bosh, who we'll get to in a minute. But uh, even without Chris Bosh, I think Miami still has a little bit of a, I, I, I'm sorry, I still, and, and yes, be, let it be a bias of mine, I don't care. I don't think LeBron is that strong mentally. Well, I think that if Hussein White side or whatever his name is, ah, yes, I forgot about that. If he that. is not healthy, they they don't want to play him. But if he yeah. is and can protect the rim, that's another story. Yeah. And that's when them threes are coming to play. Like OKC, which we not hadn't talked about yet, beating up on San Antonio. One of the things that um, Kawhi said was, "Yes, you know." And when they did miss any threes, they were getting the rebounds. And when you have a, a, a big boy presence and a big body presence like Whiteside, you don't have to worry about that many offensive rebounds. He's snagging like 20, 15 rebounds. So with him missing, Lord, yeah. and Udonis has them, but I didn't even know he was still playing. If you got to put him in. <laughs> yeah, we talked about that yesterday. We had no idea that Udonis was even on the team still. So uh. they, they need to be praying somewhere. They should have went to church yesterday. And, uh, Heard about that one. Yeah, I forgot about Whiteside and his uh, knee sprain, so we'll have, it'll be interesting to see where that goes. Uh, I brought up Chris Bosh, and as far as him, the situation is, I guess, for what it, for all intents and purposes, has been resolved at this point. They've come out and made a statement that he will be out for the rest of the playoffs, you know, dealing with his different blood clot issues, things like that. There was a point last week where, in the last couple weeks, honestly, where him, his wife, People close to him, 
We're all trying to get this movement started to get the Miami Heat to let him play. He wanted to play. He'd been off the blood thinners for X amount of weeks. Um, I think Miami did the right thing. Just every, uh, all involved, I think they did the right thing by holding him out because we do not need to see this man die on national TV, which is something that could have happened. And we just don't need to see something like that happen. Well, you know what? I was going to say you men are crazy, but I guess there's some women out there too like this. <laughs> Sit down somewhere. You don't have to play for money because you don't need the money. Like, they've been paying you for these games you've been missing this year. You got millions of dollars from Toronto when you was there. You got millions from them. You're seeing more money and you should have more account that most people are going to get in their lifetime. Right. Go sit down. Get a job at Fox or ESPN or somewhere and just talk about the game. Why risk your life when you don't have to? Right. Now, if you're some rookie out there and you ain't making a lot of money and it's your first couple of years and you just come from, you know, the ghetto or something and poverty stricken and you just trying to do whatever you can to help your family. That's another story. I still don't want you to risk your life, but I can see it then if that's the case. Like, you you know, you don't have a lot of money. You're trying to make it and you're trying to do something. Dude, you got, like, you don't need it. You got championship rings. You got two of them. Stuff that most players that have been playing for years are not going to ever be able to say. Right. What? Why risk your life for, for a game? That makes no sense to me. Yeah, like you said, his financial situation, I'm sure, is, is, is just fine. He got that $110 million that he's going to continue to be able to get because of insurance policies and things. And ain't he, haven't he been in the league like 10 or something, 11 years? Yeah, he played a So he's going to get whatever that little thing you get after you make the 10 year mark. Right. Stop it. Stop. Yeah. Um, that's going to put a, a little wrap on this segment. We. As, as I forgot to mention at the beginning of the episode, when we come back, obviously this is our Mother's Day edition. We have a couple of special guests that's going to join us for the next couple of segments. But that's for the other side. And this has been the Mac and T Show Podcast. Thank you for listening. Welcome back to the Mac and T Show podcast. Um, Mother's Day this past weekend, actual holiday, um, but the last couple of weeks, the movie Mother's Day has been out, which is the third installment of famed director Gary Marshall's holiday themed pictures that include Valentine's Day and New Year's Eve. It stars Julia Roberts who Marshall directed in classic movies such as Pretty Woman and Runaway Bride. We got Jennifer Aniston, most notably from Friends and We're the Millers. Jason Sudeikis um, from Horrible Bosses and was alongside Aniston in We're the Millers. Uh, Kate Hudson, in, in How to, is notably from How to Lose a Guy in 10 Days and Almost Famous, also Goldie Hawn's daughter. Um, I'm going to butcher this next name, I'm sure. But Asif Mand- Manvi, who is known uh, from the proposal and the internship. Uh, Hector Elis- Elizondo, from, who is known from Pretty Woman and Princess Diaries. Timothy Oliphant from The League and The Office. He's been on Okay, the I don't think all these people this important, Brian. I'm, I'm just going to do the main... The main Crux. It ain't 20 main characters, Brian. It's never 20 main characters. I'm just getting the main crux out of it. Okay. Okay. Oh, so <laughs> at this time, <laughs> let, let, let's go ahead and introduce our uh, our special guest for this segment, who is, is getting on my nerves as I as I try to read off my oh, notes Lord. and she's looking at my phone. And, but anyway, my mother, Connie McKay, 
Welcome to the show. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. It is great to be a part of the Mexican Tea Show. <laughs> this will be your first and last appearance on the Mexican Tea <laughs> Show. <laughs> thank you. Thank you very much. First and last. Uh, so, you know, that you're right. You were listening out these these stars, but it was really a lot of fun. I can see why it wasn't ranked very high, rated very high, um, because it was just like Valentine's Day and New Year's Eve. Mm -hmm. But um, this movie, unlike those, you find yourself in, with this ensemble of comedy, which Gary Marshall produced, um, but it's a celebration of mothers everywhere. And when I say that, y'all, it was like five different characters going on, as all the other shows have done in the past. But um, they all come together a week before Valentine's Day, but they all have a heartfelt story. I mean, for example, Kate Hudson, her family didn't even know she was married. But she was oh. married to... Um, Someone of a diff different diversity of hers. Yeah, that uh, I, I see man, man, man V. Yeah, I wasn't going to say yeah. that name. I know, I probably screwed it up, but that's close as I'm going to get. And they even had a child, and you know, and, and she didn't, I don't know what the reason was, maybe thinking her family's old fashioned, and maybe so, but at the end, they fall in love. And, and I'm like, I can't, I can't tell the story, so I, I'm sorry I bleeped that out there. But anyway, it's just how. No, all you can these, tell it. Look, no, we, we, we tell all the time. Go ahead. <laughs> Probably not gonna watch it. Go on and tell me what happened. Okay, and of course, Aniston's character she's stressed out because her ex husband is marrying a very, very young lady, and so there's her stressor. And then, of course, you've got um, Jason Sudakis. Am I saying his name right? Sudakis. Sudakis. Mm -hmm. He um, he is a pretty cool guy. He's uh, raising two children by himself, and uh, his wife was Jennifer Gardner. Now I forgot about you. Yeah, Jennifer Gardner. She's mm -hmm. a, she does a small part in there. But that's all I'll say because I won't learn that. But he is raising his two daughters. Right. Yep. And then of course um, Jennifer Hudson. She's a fit. Why we talked about her um, being uh, her family didn't know who you know that she was married. But then there's Julia Roberts. She did play a pretty good part in this show. She was a very sophisticated with the pretty woman Bob. Remember that you might see pictures of. She had the Bob, the different color. And um, but she's too busy to have with her career to have children. But is it an interesting take how it turns in the end? What happens and is discovered? Um, what Julia Roberts didn't was like, she, she found along the way, and it wasn't a husband, it wasn't a man, it wasn't a woman. <laughs> it was something I can't I can't spoil it. To you. Call me and I'll tell you the rest of it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> So, with that being said, um, it's a cute movie, and it finds you laughing, and all of a sudden you do. I, there was parts where my, I did tear up. because it was, Oh, I see it. She found her daughter. Okay, go ahead. Oh, you must have looked and said, yeah, she did. She, gave, she, she did. She found and I just daughter. guessed that from the trailer because this kid just popped up at a book sign. But yeah, go ahead. That's it. That's her daughter. It is her daughter. And uh, so that's kind of good. But then you find yourself laughing, and then all of a sudden tearing up, even having to wipe the tears away. Because, again, it's about mothers. It's mothers of all cultures. It's mothers of who, how they feel and how their children feel. And, again, they all come together at the, uh, a week before, and that's where it all comes together. It's pretty cool. Yeah, it goes along. Uh, apparently, it's going along the line of the Valentine's oh. Day and New Year's Eve, where they got a bunch of different interwinding plots going on, and eventually they all kind of culminate. That's exactly what it was. Well, yeah. I just want to know why this little boy was peeing in his lady pocketbook. Well, there's a lot of that that goes on. A lot, of that, a lot of things that you go, what? Yeah, okay. So there were some bad kids in that movie. Some bad kids. There bad kids, go. as you can imagine. Some people just don't tend to their kids very well. But, yeah, that's what he was doing. I'm like, what the world? And she's just looking over there like, oh, it's okay. See, she ain't going to get it. You know, you see parents like that with kids doing crazy stuff. You just want to say, get, get a hold of your kids. There's, there's some of that in it, too. Yeah. Okay, but you got to tell me why. Um, cause this daughter looked like she in her teens. So how do you not know where she's been? She been with the daddy. Well, she did. She got pregnant when she was young. Couldn't keep the baby. Mom said, "Take you know, we have to get rid of the baby." So there you uh -huh. go. So they connect okay. in the end. Okay. And then she has a, a grandchild. How about that? Uh, oh, yeah. Oh. yeah. Oh, wait a minute. Wait. Yeah. Wait a minute. <laughs> the daughter was pregnant. She marries this really, I don't know who this actor is, but he's a, he's very good. And I, he's probably been there before, but he's a very young guy. And uh, he's a comedian in the show. And um, they, evidently he wants to marry her, but she doesn't want to marry him. But, you know, in the end, she, on TV, gets down on her knee and says, would you please marry me? 
Julia Roberts walks her down the aisle holding the grandbaby, which is a funny sight because she looks very awkward holding the baby. It keeps falling off her hip. Yeah. But it's pretty, in that, there's some funny stuff, just like the Valentine's Day and just like, you know, um, New Year's Eve. But it, well, again, it's just, I hope it's better than New Year's Eve because I ain't really like that. On the Valentine's Day when I like, but New Year's Eve when I didn't really like so much. Yeah, I don't know. You know, I, I wouldn't go buy the movie off of uh, Apple TV or whatever you buy it off of me, Mac. You, you do like, you do like T does, wait till they get yeah. about 25 cents. And yeah. Then, that's what you do, T. I would, I would go buy it. I'm gonna go see it again, and I don't know that I'd say, "Hey, T, go watch it." It's just, um, it's, it's just. It's, and my mom and my daughter went, so we just kind of had a Mother's Day outing, actually. So we enjoyed that part. So that's when it's good to go with your mother and your daughter, I guess. Okay, just something to do. Okay, yeah. yeah. Okay. Wait, wait. I really didn't have it on my list of things to do, so that's, it's, it's right. okay. It's okay. <laughs> it got a one star, and I guess that's where it belongs. Oh my God! Are you serious? I yeah. did see a one star. Did you, Brian? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Dad, dad uh, is the one that, that brought the one star to my attention. You know, I don't necessarily. I, I give I give my own stars to movies. So I don't worry about what other yeah. people think. Brian Tomatoes, see him one star. Yes. Yeah. Let's see. Let's see the people voted. What the people vote? Because sometimes Rotten Tomato give you a bad rate. People like it. Oh, uh, the audience gave it a fifty-five percent. So that's that's not bad. No, yeah. But when you look online, like there's some there's some reviews that are real critical of it, and there's others like you know it's a good like Mom was saying it's a good movie to take your mom to on Mother's Day, basically. And I ain't gonna talk about their whole Mother's Day experience, but there was a picture that, that was posted on Facebook of them oh all three of their feet after uh their pedicure. And I told them, I said, their feet so ugly I couldn't decide whose was who. He better stop it. They were beautiful. Oh, they were so no. pretty. <laughs> they were so pretty. You couldn't tell, could you? Except mama's feet. They're nah, ugly. I could tell I could tell uh, grandma's because grandma got the little foot. I could tell her the part, but mom and Laura, I couldn't tell apart because both of them uh, got the long finger toes and a little bit of finger pink, toes. A, a little bit of pinky at the end. <laughs> Lord so. Well, it's been great being a part of the show. T, thank you for the Mother's Day text. I always appreciate it. Look forward to your text messages. Yeah. Yeah. And if yeah, any of you get true. a chance to go out on YouTube, you can see Brian's Mother's Day card sent to me. He made personally. That's it's right. It's yeah, nice. Mother's Day video. That's what happened. That's what you do when you don't have it's any money. Video. Yeah, that's what you do when you oh, don't have shit. any money to spend. <laughs> you create on your own. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it was great though. I loved it. Thank you very much. Be Mac. Well, that's gonna uh, put an end to this segment. We will be back on the other side with another special guest for our Empire review. But that's for the other side. This has been the Mac and T Show. What time is it? What time is it? Welcome back to the Mac and T Show podcast. T, would you like to introduce our, our guest? This is T. It's great to be a Florida Gator Davis <laughs> with her mother, Patricia Armour. Hey, mama. Hey, baby. <laughs> How are you guys? We're doing good. We're doing good. Uh, Miss Armour is going to join us on our Empire segment today. Uh, let's see. And I'm just going to kind of quickly run through some different plots and plot points and um and i'll get miss armor's take on it uh first one the family song for the aces that was presented to showrunner d majors uh it <laughs> i really after joking about it last week i really do believe that the lions are clearly the first family of music they they proved that to me on this episode because they argue and i mean just all out in front of d majors who is this guy who can literally shut them down from performing on the aces if he wanted to and they just they they don't get they don't care they're arguing with each other cookie calling lucius fat and all this other good stuff um the song that they were intending to sing for the aces kept changing throughout the episode 
finally culminating with a song, uh, choosing a song that Lucius and his mother actually had their only sweet moment in the whole episode where they were playing and singing it together at a piano. Uh, when Lucius and Hakeem and Jamal actually perform the song for D Majors, he loves it and he obviously gives them their spot. Uh, D Majors and Jamal have a huge hot and heavy moment in the studio where, you know, they kind of, you know, I don't, I don't, I don't want to, I don't want to, you know, say too much, but they, you know, they kind of feeling each well, other a little bit. But, you got to hear Jamal. You got to wait a minute. You got to remember Jamal did not want to do it. Let's slap him upside the head. Right. He wanted to do what he wanted to do. But go on. But uh, what what go do ahead. you what do you think about um first what do you think about the song? Oh, I loved it. The song was great. Me too. It really did. Yeah. It came together. Brought them together. Yeah, I, yeah. and which was shocking to me because they just at each other's throats all the time. Yeah. Um, what do you uh, think is for? Uh, obviously, D Majors and Jamal they're having their little thing together. I, D majors don't want to be out yet. Obviously, you know that's the big hiccup in their thing. What, what do you think is going to come from that? I think that he's going to keep playing behind the scenes with him the whole time. Uh, but also, I think the is going to get what he want out of. That's, that's mostly his point. But he's, you know, he's young in the game, and that's the way he acted with the whole thing. I'm like, you know, that man ain't thinking about you. Right. What was your problem? <laughs> you saw how he got mad at him when he ignored him and all. Didn't he tell you he didn't want nobody to know? So don't come at him in the public because it ain't gonna work. Right. right. It's, especially with Jamal. Jamal just kind of going through the same little thing with you know his little fling with Sky. Right. Um, That's crazy. I mean, he ain't that young and immature. Right. Uh, the next oh, thing about even remember how people were. <laughs> <laughs> um, what you forget is. Yeah. Let's see. The next uh, thing I want to get to, and I, I just labeled it in my notes, a thirsty friendship. And I just want to say this. If I'm ever in a situation where I need some shady stuff done to take care of it, I want me a friend like thirsty. T, a what do you call it? A <laughs> pimp named Slickback. Yes. He uh he has Harper abducted by some you know some some of his thugs, but it uh, should be noted that one of her heels fell off, and as the you know as, as we're left at the scene as we're left at the scene, um something could come from that, but this guy here is shady, dirty, but he gets some stuff done. Uh, what do you think? Um, do you think that's gonna play in? And I'll get to the FBI agent in a little bit, but do you think that's gonna play in? With her shoe being left at the scene, you think that's going to play into his investigation? That, Eric, also, I'm thinking when he did it, okay, like you said, the shoe left there. How many cameras in the area? You know, everybody looking at cameras on different buildings and all nowadays to put him at the spot. But everything he do, he get away with it. Nobody seems to know where he ever is. So, hey, it's going to be something else in the end. Right, I, but I want to know where she is because we ain't seen her since then. Yeah, we just it just implied that you know maybe she, he got he he had her off, but she didn't you know she yeah. didn't die in the scene obviously. Um, right, they need to let us know what's going on. Because was this not the last episode for the season? Or did we have one more? We got one more this this coming up this week. Oh, okay, yeah, okay, that worked. Um, as long as he don't do one of them crazy. Run through everything that he think he can and clean up all the mess like he did that first time. Right. Uh, oh, no, he even words. Remember, he done grabbed mama. He said, take mama off for Lucius. Well, after that cake scene, he might need to take her off for Lucius wind up dead. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mentioned the FBI agent who we find out name is Tariq. Uh, yeah. Candace and Carol, um, you know, they're meeting and talking about different things. And Candace, uh, Carol tells Candace that she needs a little bit more time to make things right with everyone. Uh, comes to find out, Carol, while 
Cookie was in jail, Carol helped Lucius murder some people. So that's that's weighing heavily on her mind. That's why she's trying to get back, you know, in good graces. Candace doesn't want her to tell Cookie because, as Candace referred to her, we don't need Hurricane Cookie going fi- her, uh, category five on everybody. Um, Tariq, the FBI agent, is listening to their conversation at the next table. Later on in the episode, we see him approach Carol at a bar who, obviously, Carol just got through going through her little rehab stint. She's sitting at the bar, and Tariq even makes notice that she has not drank, not one sip of her drink. It's, you know, the ice is completely melted in the drink, and so she's clearly just sitting there, you know, contemplating drinking, but never does. Um, Comes out that Tariq is, you know, from their past in Philly. She asked, uh, Carol asked him if he's working for the NYPD. He said no, he quit the force. But as we see in the episode, we see his badge, his FBI badge. Um, we see in the previews for next week that Cookie is going to approach him and tell him she knows he's working for the feds. Where do you see this going? Is it going to be something where he's after Cookie? Is he after Lucius? Is he after everybody? I mean, He's after everybody, but the point... The sister being all gangster, like she all that. You don't know this guy. He's not interested in you. After all these years, and she like she, I believe she really went and told him everything. Yeah, I think she, she ran her episode, mouth. She, yes, yeah. it's yeah. on because she don't know who she's talking to. Even Kip Cookie told her he is not straight. He is dead. She not listen. So when they all go down, it's gonna be interesting this week. Very yeah, proud of him. <laughs> oh, everybody gonna be going down this week. We oh, all gonna going down. Get shot. Yeah, so somebody dies. I don't know who yeah. it's gonna be, but yeah. Um, oh, I can't wait to see. Him, baby. Yes. Uh, next topic I had was, and I made just a little hashtag. Hashtag Rhonda knows, as in Rhonda knows who pushed her. Or no, Rhonda knows she was pushed. Yes. So yes. she, she the red shoes again. <laughs> yes. yes. Yeah. She she is accidentally bumped by some movers while she's at Anika's house and they're moving things in her in Anika's house. Uh, she act, she has a flashback when she's bumped of somebody pushing her in the back when she falls down the stairs. Later on, her and Anika are talking. She has another flashback when she sees the bottom of Anika's shoes, the red bottom. Um, she has a flashback of the kill of the killer, the pusher, leaving the scene with the red bottom shoes. Uh, Grace Geely, who plays Anika, has posted on Twitter repeatedly that she that Anika is not the one that pushed Rhonda. I don't think it's too easy for it to be her. It's got to be somebody else. So there's going to be a swerve. I don't know what it's going to be, but it's going to be interesting to see where that goes. A pimp named Sleekback had them shoes on while he was doing <laughs> no, it. No, no, it was Anika, but the thing about it, she thinks she's gotten away. You saw her expression when she brought up the situation, and I'm like, yeah, she know you did it, Right. she don't know how to approach her with it. Right, when she said, when Rhonda tells her that, you know, she she remembers being pushed, Anika kind of like gets his little startled look like, oh, I thought you said you weren't pushed, you know? Yeah. So that's, and she know who did it. She, fig- she figured, but she ain't put it together yet. When that baby come, or when she think about that baby, she don't realize she pushed her because they, they said he don't want the one, a Lion King, and that's going to be her baby. She was determined for that. Yes, indeed. So that's going to be interesting. Um, Very. My last topic uh, I had titled Mama Walker Goes Zero to 100 Real Quick. Because, uh, mm-hmm. let's see, I just kind of run it down. Andre should have, in my mind, Andre should have rethought his decision. About even bringing his grandma into the into the picture when she when he saw her go nuts at bingo at the at the uh, nursing home. Yeah. Oh no! What <laughs> oh, she she lost yeah. in bingo and she threw th- she she threw a fit. She threw stuff everywhere. See, they should have left her out. Now I have seen elderly folks play bingo, so I know this is common in some way. Let's be real about it, but still. Right. Um. Let's see. Obviously, Andre. She went above and beyond when she did what she yeah, did. I got a ring. Yeah, I'd have left the scene. I don't know. <laughs> what she do? 
Oh, she she threw her little she threw her little pieces and her game boards everywhere and just screamed out loud and it was a, it was a scene. Um, he clearly has his you know his ulterior motives for bringing her in. You know he's feeling betrayed by Lucius and you know wants to get back at him. Uh, Mama Walker, real sweet and innocent, first seeing Lucas, uh, Lucas, Lucius, and uh, like I said last week in my predictions, I feel like. I, I felt like he was going to be a scared little child, and he was. He he, he cowered down real quick, and um, it all kind of culminated at the end of the episode when Lucius comes downstairs 3 o'clock in the morning, see his mama cooking all kind of cakes and pies. Uh, yeah, so... Eat the cake, anime! That's exactly what I thought. I thought, Lord, this is a, this is a reverse I can tell you to help. <laughs> That's amazing. Um, so you know, basically they have a little back and forth where he, she calls him a liar and pretty much tells him uh, that everything bad that's happened to her in her life is because of him. Yeah, blames him for everything. And you know, she she flashes that knife and you know just going back and forth with each other. Um, let's see. I'll just go ahead and the last little bit, you know, she asked him if, if if he loved her, and he nodded yes or whatever, and she said, liar, if you loved me, you wouldn't have put me away for 21 years, and he said, you were sick, you said so yourself, and she tells him, I was sick, now I'm sorry, I'm sorry that I was, I'm too weak to, I was too weak to kill you when I had the chance, and, and she, yeah, she, so that, she, that's <laughs> why I'm afraid. Yeah, she licks that cream off that knife and it looked like a real killer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, oh, have mercy. I'm afraid for Lucius. So, he better be afraid for himself. Yeah, I, 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 look, ain't I, I text T, even though I knew T was long asleep by the time that, that point in the episode. I said, I said somebody called the cops and sent them to Lucius because Kizzy is going nuts. Kizzy is going rogue. Hey. But yeah. uh, this is going to be interesting. I don't want to know who gets shot. So, yeah, it's, it, it, that's going to be the big crux in this episode this week is who 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 gets shot, who gets gunned down. And uh, I hope he don't pull that. I told you he he seemed like he liked Dallas when he was younger. And I hope he don't pull that who killed Jr. and have somebody get shot and that be the end and don't tell you who and you got to wait the whole right. next fall to next fall. But he can't. He, hopefully he don't go that route because, like you said, it is the last show of the season. You leave us hanging like that? Oh, please. Yeah. But you know they do all kind of crazy stuff now. I'm upset about a few things going on in the <laughs> television industry. But hopefully he got sense enough to go on and give us something to go on next week to bring, uh, next season to bring us back and think we're going to have something worthwhile. But I got a point. I'm sick and tired of people thinking that they're doing too much music. It's about music. Why would they be doing too much? Right. I like I yeah, like I the music it. aspect of it. You I know? love it. Yes. Yes. Why yes, do you like this show? Yeah. So. yeah, the show is about music. That's just stupid. Like, what else they going to do? Yeah. <laughs> this is about uh, musicians and the music industry. Why else would they? Well, right. should you got to have that in it. I mean. <laughs> That's true. So it, yeah, yeah. I, I hope I, 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 I really hope that this don't end like last season where I had a headache at the end of the episode because there was so many different plot twists and turns and yeah, I, just, just have have me a big big oh my gosh ending at the end and let that be it. Yeah. But um, yeah. yeah. No, he, he gonna do that same because this past week was the same. They were all over the place. Yes. It's just like he's not sure what he want to do. Well, he just trying a little bit of everything. It was good. I ain't going to take that from it. Well, yeah. Yeah. When they brought Mama in, I think she took the cake. Because, like Lucius told that boy, you don't know what you brought. You yeah. can take a pill and be all right. I'm <laughs> sure at the nurse home, they're getting her medicine. She be killing it. No, no pun. She, no, no, <laughs> she, yeah, she took the cake. No pun intended. <laughs> no. No. <laughs> but, uh. I ain't well, that's going to put a wrap on things for us. Mama, we want to thank you for coming on with us today. You guys have a good one, and I'm going to get out. Peace. Okay. Y'all take care. I got to get ready. All right. Bye-bye, Mama. Later. That's going to put a wrap on our show today. I hope everyone enjoyed our 
Mother's Day edition. Uh, as always, I'm one of your co-hosts, Brian McKay, and I am with... See, it is great to be a Florida Gator Davis. Thank y'all for coming out. And happy Mother's Day to all the mothers out there, especially both of ours. And thank you for coming on the show today. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is the Mac and T Show. This is the Mac and T Show. We talk movies and TV shows. Sports and world news. Coasting like on a world cruise. Hosted by Brian McKay and T Davis. Yeah. You can't tame us. We're going to the top of becoming famous. What time is it? It's time for the Mac and T Show. What time is it? I said it's time for the Mac and T Show.